Art used to be experienced one-to-one. -one. Someone made a painting and you went to the museum or the chapel and looked at it and then you went home and, I don't know, bore children and taught them how to farm. But the new way of seeing is one to infinity. The museum is now our feed. And the internet is not only an archive of artworks that exist elsewhere in their official form, but its own medium, making what we see on our screens the thing itself. Is it lazy? Is it cheap? Does it ask too little of a generation whose attention spans have been stretched so thin it's almost impossible to... Oh my God, Petra! Hi. <laughs> Will you um, show me some of your webcam work? Yes. <laughs> wow. You found these like weird old internet filters. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of like a digital hoarder. I've been using different kinds of webcam software for about 10 years now. It's a great way of working for an introverted nerd. What is that? Digital technology has completely changed how artists work. You can delete, revise, refine. Can I see it? Ah, oh my gosh! Austin, your work uses a mixture of Photoshop and traditional painting. Yeah, I think for me, like, actually, I started using a computer to make images before painting. It's exciting to, like, try different things and go into new places that I haven't experimented with. And you always see, like, artists in the past throughout art history experimenting with new technology. It's just a way to understand new ways of making an image. Oh, sorry, I have to get this. Hey, Corey. Tavi. What's happening? Your work deals a lot with breaking up and rearranging technology. You're kind of like a hacker. Yeah, the great thing about a computer is everything inside of it is malleable. So for example, I have a piece called Data Diaries where I screwed with the way my computer decoded video. The result was a kind of amazing meltdown. How do you feel about the term hacker? Well, there's one definition of that word, which is somebody who kind of plays around on computers and almost pranks the technology itself. And that describes a lot of the work that I do. Tavi, come here a sec. I need to talk to you. Douglas? Oh, hello. Yes, it's me. You don't have to have that thing on your face. Hi, <laughs> how are you doing? Good. Your paintings deal with um, facial recognition software? It's more like facial de-recognition software. It's uh, ways of taking a facial image and changing it so that robots and bots on the internet can't detect your face. Do you see art in the digital age as an act of resistance? Oh, absolutely. The thing about photography in the 21st century is that it's actually this long string of letters and numbers that goes up into the cloud and it talks to other photographs and says, oh, do we have in common? And they're out for a nickel here, a penny there, and it's kind of scary. Oh, so as much as I think I am cultivating an identity by sharing all of these things about myself on the internet, I'm also just freely giving information on how to be marketed towards. You bet. So, as we spend more and more of our lives in worlds created by technology, it makes sense that new mediums and forms of expression would follow. Artists are interested in how we see the world, and these portals of communication will be an endless source of inspiration. But it's just another color in the discussion of reality, fantasy, and human connection that art has explored for centuries. These are new answers to old questions. Where's it going next? Oh, I don't know. <laughs>